Hello everyone, this video is on Burning Man and the phenomenon that Burning Man is and, and why does it exist and why are all of these entrepreneurs and people from all around the globe traveling to the desert to go into extreme heat and spending a fortune and putting themselves in such an uncomfortable position for two weeks not being able to shower, being in these sandstorms, spending maybe a year building a sculpture or an art piece that they're then just going to set fire to and run around naked and take a load of drugs. Like, what? why is that happening right now? And it's such a trend. And Burning Man happens in the Nevada desert. It's coming up next week. And so I thought, oh, maybe I could channel, like, what is going on in Burning Man? Why is it? Why is it happening? So let's see what comes up. Oh, what comes up immediately is that it's actually not organized by humans. It's organized by a non-physical intelligence that is trying to upgrade the human species. And sometimes this happens where non-physical intelligence will choose like gateways into earth it might be through you know certain lineages of gurus and mantras it might be just through experiences that people have randomly through people and, and serendipitous moments and certain places like Mount Shasta or different I don't know what the word is there. I don't think there is a word for it, but like a different space, like a charged space or a charged person that people can experience. And something happened and it moved into what is known as Burning Man. But Burning Man isn't just a load of hippies in the desert taking drugs and running around naked and burning a load of statues and, and acting all crazy. Burning Man is a way for the people that go into it to upgrade. They have like a cosmic upgrade when they come out of it, regardless of whether they get naked and take drugs and run around doing things they wouldn't normally do in everyday society regardless of whether they do or they don't it's a it's a sacred space that has effects on the nervous system and changes people and i don't know why that cosmic intelligence has chosen the desert and burning man but people are often very different after experiencing it and they don't see the world and themselves the same way after they've come out of it. It kind of, it just, it, it creates a destruction and a rebirth, which is reflected in the way that people are burning down the old things or things that they built and then leaving space for something new. And, you know, it's all about impermanence, too, burning things that you've built, because everything you build gets destroyed other than the consciousness behind it that made it. That never gets destroyed. And so people go on this big inner journey and they challenge themselves. They do things they wouldn't do normally what they would be afraid of. They have to be radically self-reliant on themselves and resilient in ways that maybe they don't ever get a chance to be in, in a comfortable life. They get to, you know, how do I survive when I don't shower? How do I eat when there's no refrigeration? How do I sleep on the ground and not freeze to death at night and how do I stop my skin from burning with this dust and 
I get nosebleeds and it can be quite intense. And I've been to Burning Man probably six times. And there's a lot of non-physical energy there. And if you're sensitive, you can pick it up. Some people are just party, 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 and maybe not aware of it. Other people are. There's a big temple, which is so divine. This beautiful, magnificent temple is built every year. And people come from all over the world and they write down something traumatic that happened to them that they want to let go of and they pin it in this temple and it's the temple's just covered and written on with all of the trauma of the people that come to the desert like forgive me I did this I shouldn't have my father touched me I'm you know I need to to let go of it my dog died there's a picture of the dog I mean if you read the notes in the temple it's just so beautiful. People wanting to let go of something so that they can move to a more freer place. And they're aware that I'm holding on to this. I'm holding on to this anger. I'm holding on to this resentment. There's an impediment and I'm going to go to the desert and I'm going to put it in this temple. And this temple is going to be burnt and I'm going to watch it go up in flames and I'm going to feel the release. And think about that. I'm getting goosebumps actually as I talk about this. This is this is okay. So there's a lot of whoa, there's a lot of non-physical beings that come to support the burning of the temple to come and take all of the horror that the human species has seen and heard to take it out of their physiology and to dissolve what they can't do those higher beings can dissolve things that humans can't dissolve and they take it from the humans and they dissolve it in that fire fire houses a lot of non-physical intelligence maybe you know this maybe you don't that's why when you go to churches, they have flames, because flames can house an infinite amount of non-physical beings. And so in Burning Man, the crescendo of Burning Man is all of the art pieces in the temple are all burnt. The whole place goes up in flames. Everybody comes together and sets fire. Think about that. Think about how many non-physical beings are in that fire space. It's a huge fire ceremony. It's a divine huge fire ceremony where a lot of the, the pain in the world can just get transmuted and given out to beings that can take it. It's beautiful. It's magnificent. And also, like, how did that divine intelligence come up with such a fun way for young people and old people as well, people of all ages, to come and have a have a laugh and party and build artwork and 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 run around naked if they want to and experiment and and in just a fun way it's just like oh thanks thanks for creating something really unique and burning man has a sense of humor i mean if you've never been it's just such a laugh i mean nothing is serious the camps have really odd names I'll just share you one experience that I had in Burning Man, which is just maybe going to give you an idea if you haven't been. I was cycling around in Burning Man. Don't even know whether I had clothes on or not. But, you know, sadhus in India cycle, don't cycle, but they walk around with dust all over them. So there's something to that. And there was a massive, massive dust storm. And I couldn't see anything in front of me. And then I heard this crazy, weird music and this rabbit that was the size of a house, like a giant house, was moving towards me. It was like an electronic rabbit out of the dust storm. And it had like a disco in its head or something. And then 
it kind of moved. It was just, it's kind of like astral traveling, this kind of thing. It then moved past me. And I was like, wow, only this happens in Burning Man. And then about 20 people who were dressed as carrots just ran through the dust storm. And then I go, when are you going to experience something like that? And then the dust storm died down. And then I cycled a little further. And then I got to the edge of the desert where Burning Man, kind of the periphery. And there was like a pop-up cinema in the middle of nowhere and then you drive a little bit further on your bike and then there's just a random like a group of people meditating and then there's some transgender group doing strange things and then there's some men wearing tutus and it's it's just so so psychedelic you don't need to take drugs when you go to burning man burning man is I don't even know what Burning Man is. I mean, it is changing now. I know that there's cameras now and people have Wi-Fi, so it's not the way it used to be. But that still, yeah, that still doesn't take take away from the fact that there's still a lot of non-physical intelligence. But I wonder, because sometimes non-physical beings don't like... Um, they don't really like devices. Sometimes if there's too many devices, electronic stuff or fo photos being taken, they, they, they can like get moody about that. But not all of them. Some of them do do show up in, in photos. I know that somebody showed me a picture of a group of people in Burning Man and there was somebody in the photo that wasn't in the group at that time and they found out that that person was had passed away and so that was strange things like that happen at burning man you can't predict what's going to happen so let me see if i can channel anything else about burning man Burning Man is an opportunity for people to step outside of their everyday personalities and be something else, even be other people. And people get flyer names, they don't use their real names. And so they get to experience well, if I'm a guy, I'm, say I'm a straight guy. There's something called Tutu Tuesdays. I get to wear a tutu on a Tuesday. What's it like to be a woman? I'm going to put on a tutu. Doesn't mean that they would do that when they're outside of Burning Man, unless they put on a tutu and realize I like it and then do it. But it kind of breaks down the barriers between groups because you have to radically accept it's part of the principle, everybody that's there, no matter what they're into. So if you have somebody who's into wearing a tutu and they're a guy, you accept that. If you have a group of people that don't want to wear any clothes, you accept that. If there's a group of people that want to run around and have polyamorous relationships, you accept that. If you have another group that doesn't want to do anything and, and is telling bad jokes. You accept their bad jokes. It's really about bringing everybody into the heart space and leaving no one out of the heart space. It's very inclusive that I respect all beings, no matter what their preferences are. even. If I find it difficult in the relative world, when I'm in Burning Man, I'm going to experiment. I'm going to try on a new way of being where I can accept everybody. How does that feel to accept everybody? How does it feel to accept the absurd? How does it feel to accept things that maybe I'm repulsed by? How does it feel to wear 
clothes I wouldn't normally wear or no clothes. How does that feel to be united with everything? And if the personality has an issue with it, to just drop the issue. Just drop it. We're in Burning Man. Just drop it. How does it feel to be in this expansive space? And can I hold on to that when I come out of Burning Man? And this is where it gets trippy because, well, tricky because when people come out of Burning Man, they go through what is called decompression, where they get quite low because they've experienced such unity and openness and non judgment and playfulness and humor and nothing serious. And then they come into the the real world, which they call the default world. And it seems like people are judging and, and people are, are not open. And, and, it, and the energy of coming into the real world can, can cause a little bit of nostalgia for Burning Man and people can get into low moods and some people get depressed and so then there's these pop-up parties to help people integrate back into society after being being in Burning Man and then some of that openness some of that non-judgment flows into the work environments flows into the entrepreneurial ideas that come from Burning Man flows into the relationships and into the world. And those burners go out into the world and they share their, their new way of being in the population. And some of it does integrate into more compassion in the world. Some of it integrates into to a higher platform of awareness and it integrates. And so the world becomes a better place because people have challenged themselves. And so waves of good energy come out of Burning Man and that, that wave affects the whole planet. Whenever people come together in groups with an intention to heal, or to have fun. And I, I live next to the Hollywood Bowl and I feel so blessed because there's people coming together to sing and to laugh if they're comedians there or to just dance if, if they're dance groups there. And it's just great. You can sometimes hear the music and it's just uplifted the whole environment. And sometimes we think, how can we help the world? Well, you can help the world by having fun. You can help the world by not taking everything so seriously. You can help the world by coming together in groups and healing and meditating together and, and then moving around in the kingdom and being yourself unapologetically and discovering who you are. And also self-discovery can happen in Burning Man. Some people go to Burning Man, they don't realize really who they are or their talents or their sexual preferences or anything, and they may not know, and then they go there and they're like, oh, I'm this. Oh, I'm not that. And they can get a safe space to explore because everybody's agreed that there's radical self-expression and there's non-judgment. People feel safe to experiment and, and to see what feels good for them. And nobody should finger wag and say, well, that makes me feel uncomfortable. So you can't do that or be that. No, 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 no. And when you add a little bit of humor, it all works. Humor. When you sprinkle humor on anything, it works. And I, one of the, my favorite things about Burning Man is the humor. It's just hilarious just so funny yeah I mean if you if you have like a blasting sense of humor you're gonna love Burning Man because nothing's serious I know that there was a a phone booth in the middle of the desert and it was called call God and then you'd go into the phone booth and you'd ring a number and then somebody pretending to be God would answer and go hello this is God and then 
you would ask a question and the person would come up with something really strange or funny or jokey. I mean, it's not serious. We know we're not calling God, but are we? Were they? How, did God come through the humor of that moment and send a message? God has a sense of humor. Burning man's on the planet right now. And so I think I'll end on that note.